Today. We're just getting going on our big, comfy couch. Right, Molly? 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 Gosh, where's Molly? There you are! <laughs> Oopsie! I forgot you had your couch climbing lesson this morning. <laughs> Monkey girl. Okay, Molly, down you come very carefully. <laughs> Hello, my little Molly monkey. Wow, you sure are learning to be very good at couch climbing, isn't she? <laughs> I bet you're getting stronger, too. <gasps> Make a muscle. Oh, let's see. <gasps> Wow, you are getting stronger. What? Oh, you want me to make a muscle? Okay. What do you think? <laughs> Soft as a marshmallow is not. Ooh, kind of squidgy. Guess I could use some exercise. Hey, I'll go stretch on my clock rug. That's good exercise. All right, come on. Time to stretch. Huh? <laughs> well, feel my muscles now. Better? Sort of. Well, all the better to hug you with. <laughs> Wee! <sighs> You're a real gem. Isn't Molly a gem? A gem? It's precious, like you. A real gem is actually a special stone. Yeah, and you can make rings or necklaces or even crowns with them, because gems are beautiful. And guess what? They grow inside the earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you have to dig really deep to find them. Yeah, and then when you bring them up into the light, gems sparkle and twinkle. Do you like my diamond? Isn't it gorgeous? It's a rock, a real rock. <laughs> well, I wish I really did have a diamond ring. Or even better, a ruby, because they're red. Or an emerald, because they're green. Green. 
green. Hey, I bet if I dig deep enough in this couch, I might find an emerald, or maybe even a ruby, or even a diamond. I bet. Well, I am going to dig deep and find a gem. Watch. Uh, nope. No. <laughs> nah. Diamond. It's so sparkly and twinkly. I knew if I dug deep enough in the couch, I'd find a real gem. What door? I... Oh, <laughs> right. Um, This is a doorknob, not a diamond. Silly me. <sighs> you know, Molly, I just thought of something. I think you're supposed to dig in the ground for precious gems and jewels, not in couches. Oh, Piffle, I really wanted a real jewel, not some silly old doorknob. Pickle juice! What's that? You think if I dug in Granny's garden I might find a precious gem? Hey, of course! Good thinking, Molly. Okay, let's go. You don't want to. You've got another climbing lesson. Oh, but Molly, that's not as important as digging for gems and jewels. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No! I... <sighs> okay, fine. You stay here and couch climb. And I'll go out and dig in Granny's garden for precious jewels. And you're going to be sorry when I have my own diamond ring and you don't. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> Bet you will. Huh. See ya. Hi, Granny. Hello there, Lunatka. I'm going to ask Granny if I can dig. Granny, I've come to ask you for a favor. A flavor? Um, chocolate. Uh, no, Granny. Not a flavor. A favor. Oh, good, because I'm too busy digging in my garden to stop and eat right now. Uh, right, Granny. Um, what I want to know is, would you let me dig really deep in your garden for treasures? Oh, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Digging for little treasures. Oh, you are? Yep. My garden is full of gems. Full? Buckets full. <gasps> Buckets full? Ooh! Oi, oi! Ah, yes, I think I found one. A real gem. Oh, oh Ooh. Wait, let me see. Oh, is it a ruby Ooh. or a diamond? Oh, it's a red one. This is a red wriggler. One of the best. That's a worm! Of course it is. But that's 
not a treasure. Oh, in my garden, these little guys are real treasures. Oh, there's another one. Here, Lunetka, hold my bucket. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 bucket's full of worms. Granny, I wanted to dig for jewels and gems today, not worms. There aren't any rubies in my garden. But, Lunetka, these little guys are real gems. Better than rubies. Well, sure would make a yucky necklace. But I don't want necklaces. I want vegetables. And these little guys... Munch the dirt. And make it good for my plants to grow in. My little treasures. This is not the day I had in my... Have a what? Major Bedhead? Possibly, but then again, reality is such a shifting sand, don't you find? Huh? Hey, Bedhead. See you got your glad rags on. What's the occasion? Well, I'm off to the Peninsula Club to be a social climber. That's a club for fancy clowns. <laughs> fancy schmancy. That's what I say. In fact, this is my last delivery ever before heading off to the Peninsula Club, which is where I belong. Package for Mademoiselle Lunette the Clown. Package for Mademoiselle Lunette the Clown. Package? Hold it right there, Mr. Fancy Nancy Schmancy Pants. What's all this nonsense about last delivery ever and never being a courier again? What's up, Bedhead? Well, I... I, uh, uh... Oh, shucks. It's kind of hard to explain. Please tell us, Major Bedhead. Well, if I get into that fancy club for clowns, people will think I'm special and important. But you are special and important. I am? To me. Wow. <laughs> me three, two. Precious, even? More precious than even a diamond ring. Gosh, that is precious. <gasps> More precious than even your catnip mouse? Wow, I am precious. Bedhead, you're more precious to me than a whole bucket of worms. <gasps> really? Wow, I mean... Ew! Oh, no, that's really precious to Granny. It is? The best. Oh, well, thanks, Granny. My own bucket of worms. <laughs> I'm a big goof, right? Yeah, but at least I'm a very special and important goof. I just want to stay me. Good for you. That's the way. Welcome back. Package for Lunette the... Whoops. Package for Lunette the Clown. Thank you, Major Bedhead, my favorite courier under the clown sun. That's little old me. Wonder what it is. Ooh. Huh. Let's see. Oh. It's from my Auntie Macassar. Ah. Dear Lunette, I'm sending you this shovel because I really dig you. Dig. <laughs> Get it? Shovel, dig. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I hope it helps you unearth some of life's surprises. Love you like a crazy. Your Andy Macassar. Well, I'm gonna go use this right now. Hey, you never know. I might find a real jewel. <gasps> a jewel? That would be lucky. Hey, this is strange. What? What is it? Something's shining. Maybe it's a really big gem. <gasps> Gigantic! Enormous, even. <sighs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> hey, 
be my dancer! Surprise! <laughs> I can't believe it's you! You're one and only! Oh, this is the best surprise! You old diamond in the rough! Watch up to now, my castle! I've had diamonds and plenty of other things that shine. None of the above make my smile as wide as knowing that you're mine. Cause my jewelry box is my heart. And baby, whenever we're apart, I open it up and it says, You're a gem. It says, Shake off them fancy shoes. Take away the piggy bank I use. Tear down my big top tent. If they take away my last red cent, I still got you. I don't need them. I still got you. You, you. Heaven knows you're a gem. I've had money to spare and more to line my pockets. I've had pearls and golden rings and silver plated lockets. Now my jewelry box is my heart. And baby, whenever we're apart, I open it up and it says, you're a gem. It says, shake off them bands. Shoes. Take away the piggy bank I use. Tear down my big top tent. If they take away my last red cent, I still got you. Mm -hmm. I still got you. Yes, I do. I still got you. 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 Heaven knows you're a jay. Oh! You know it's true. I do. I'm your gem, and Molly's my... Oh, Molly! Well, she's my gem, not some old diamond ring. That's the truth. Oh, I better go tell her. Go on. Bye, everybody! Bye-bye. Well, I gotta get going over to the Peninsula Club. <gasps> You're going there? Yep, I'm giving a speech to those fancy bored clowns. Liven things up a little bit. <laughs> hey, I'm driving right by there. Care for a ride? Oh, Marvy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that cashmere? Oh, darling. <laughs> I want to tell Molly I'm sorry. Hi. Nope. And you know what? I don't care at all. Because you're more precious to me than any diamond or any ring or anything. Oh, Molly, I'm sorry for before. Forgive me? Oh. Mmm. Oh. oh, hey, look! This is the shovel that Auntie Macassar gave me. Yep, she was being a miner underground. What an adventurer. Hey, Molly, that gives me a big idea. Would you like to hear a story right now? Ah, here's the book. Oh, would you turn the light on, please, Molly, while I get my glasses? Thank you. You gotta have good light. Ha, huh, comfy? Good, cause this is the story of Cindyana Jones and the Temple of Loon. Once upon a time, I think it was a Friday, there was a world famous adventurer, Cindyana Jones. She was brave and she was famous and she had big muscles because she searched the world over for gems and precious jewels. When she went on an adventure, she couldn't take her doll. It was too dangerous for dolls, but not for Cindy Anna Jones! On that special day, I think it was a Friday, Cindy was going on her most important adventure ever. 
She was going to find the hopeless diamond. The most precious diamond in the whole wide world. It was as big as a doorknob, and she had to find it. So Cindiana traveled far, far away to the Temple of Loon. The Temple of Loon was hidden away, far, far in a cave, full of butterflies. And spiders. Tickly spiders. Cindiana had to climb up, and down, and over, and under. And then, <gasps> she saw it! The most precious diamond in the whole wide world! Cindiana had to have it! It was dangerous, but at last the diamond was hers. Cindiana felt pretty proud of herself. She wanted to show her diamond to some clown, but there was no one to share it with. And she wanted to tell all about her adventure, but the diamond wasn't a very good listener. It was hopeless. And that night when she went to sleep, the diamond wouldn't cuddle at all. Cindiana felt lonely. And when she looked up at the stars twinkling in the dark sky, she thought of the really most precious gem in the whole world to her. Her doll, who loved her and listened to her and shared things with her. And liked to cuddle, lots. Diamonds are nice, but dolls are forever. So Cindiana rushed home to the most precious doll in the whole wide world. She showed her the hopeless diamond. She told her of her adventures in the Temple of Loon, and finally she climbed into bed for their cuddle. And just before she fell asleep, she whispered, You're my real treasure. Forever. The end. Ah, <sighs> that's just like you and me, Molly. Well, Cindiana Jones loved her doll, but sometimes she was too busy to show it. See, sometimes I get so busy digging for things and being a world-famous clown that... Hey, who made this big mess? Me? I did, didn't I? Well, I love all the stuff that comes out of the couch. It's precious to me. So I have to clean it up. It's only fair. So get ready for the 10-second tidy. Ready, set, go! Would you like to climb under the old dream blanket with me? Okay. Well, I hope you can come over another day to play with Molly and me on our big comfy couch. Toodaloo! <sighs> you know, Molly, you really are a gem. More precious than a diamond or a sapphire. I should have called you Ruby. <laughs> Wow, Molly and I sure are busy today, aren't we, Molly? Yep, we're practicing our best wiggly moves, right, Molly? And squiggly moves like this. See? <laughs> it's for the clown town, shake your fanny, hunga dunga, hoot nanny, wahoo! <laughs> oh, wow. Good wiggly moves, Molly. Gee. If I want to be as good a wiggler as Molly, I need to practice. Hmm. Oh, there must be something in here that'll help me wiggle. Oh, hey, check this out, Molly. It's
That's my Mecca Lecca Heidi Ho Hawaiian grass skirt. Watch. Ooh. Oh, oh. I don't think this is the very best thing to help me practice wiggling. It's really itchy. Ooh. Oh. Ah. Hmm. Something wiggly. Hey. Oh. Baseball? <laughs> Why not? And Lunette the Clown steps up to home plate, ready to hit a home run. She takes her stance, checks the bat, there's the pitch, and... <gasps> it's a home run! Yay! Lunette saves the game! Yay! Ooh. You know, if I really want to be a good wiggler like Molly, I think I need to limber up and stretch out. Ah, on my clock rug, come on. Time to stretch. Interesting wiggle moves, Molly. Actually, kind of weird wiggle moves. But I guess practice makes perfect. Huh. So now that I've had my stretch, I'm all ready to go out and... Ew! Who made this wet mess? Oh, the couch is all wet. Right where Molly is sitting. Molly? Oh, dear. Oh, that's why Molly was wiggling in that funny way. Oh, oh, Molly, are you okay? Um, Molly, was it you who made the couch wet? Molly, did you have an accident? Oh, Molly, accidents happen. It's not your fault. I'm not mad at you. Come here to me. Oh, Molly, sometimes things happen that just make us feel ashamed and embarrassed. But, well, we can't really help it. Like not making it to the bathroom on time. But it's not the end of the world. No, it's just part of growing up. And there's something important that you should know. It's important to know that you're not alone. Accidents happen, you're still the tops. Just raise your chin up and don't let it drop. You couldn't help it, no need to lament. It's not how you planned it, you just kind of went. Chin up, head high, Molly. Don't give Try smiling again, you'll feel better, I bet. So dry up those teardrops and please don't forget. Don't get discouraged if your confidence breaks. We live and we learn from life's little mistakes. So chin up, head high, Molly. Don't give Shame, no shame. 
adventure. Well, little accident. Shh. I think we should let Molly have a short nap. And while she's snoozing, we can see what the Foley family is up to. Sleepyhead, how are you feeling now? Uh-oh. Molly thinks she might have had another accident. Well, let's just have a look-see. Nope. Dry as a bone. Good for you, little lady. Now, since you're all rested, would you like to come with me to visit Granny Garbanzo? Okay. Maybe Granny has some great moves for the Shake Your Fanny Hunga Dunga Hoot Nanny! Woohoo! Let's go see! Hey, there's Granny! And it looks like she's already into her wiggly moves! Come on down, Snicky! It's just a flea bat! It will do you good! Mm -mm. Oh. Hi, Granny! Good wiggly moves! Oh, hello, Lunetka! Wiggly moves? Oh, you mean for the shake your fanny? Hunga dunga! Hunga <laughs> nanny! <laughs> yeah! No. Actually, I'm trying to get Snickle Fritz down from that tree. Oh, is he stuck? No, the scratchy Fritz has fleas. Fleas? Fleas. And the only way to get rid of the fleas is to give him a bath. But he doesn't want to take a bath. So now he's hiding up in the tree, and I can't get him down. Come on, Snickle Fleas. Come down from there. Mm -mm. Oh, what am I gonna do? Hey, what about a ladder? Lunette, ladders don't get fleas. I mean, Granny, why don't you use a ladder to get Snickle Fritz out of the tree? A ladder! Hey, that's a good idea! Help me get the ladder out from under the cart, and then we'll put the ladder back. Postcard! Postcard for Lunette the Clown! Postcard for... L What's that sound? I wonder what it could be. Scratching. It sounds like scratching, and it's coming from that tree. But trees don't get itchy. Hmm. Whoa! Oh, Snickle Fritz! What are you doing hiding in that scratchy tree? Oh, you're the one who's scratching. Are you scratching because you're... itchy? Are you itchy because you have... fleas? Oh, and you're hiding in that tree because you're embarrassed and don't want to take a bath, is that it? Oh, look! It's Major Bedhead. Shh, listen. You need to take a bath. So what do you say? Do you want to come down now? Mm. Uh -uh. Hey, 
Hey, Bedhead. Oh, hi, Granny. Hi, Lunette. Hello, Midge Bedhead. Boy, are we glad to see you. You are? Sure. We've been trying to get Snicklefritz down from the tree. That's why we got the ladder. But now that you're here, maybe you could climb the ladder for us. Yeah. Oh, uh, I couldn't possibly do that. <laughs> why not? Well, it's because, uh, because... Because I'm afraid of heights. There, I've said it. Oh, oh the shame oh, of it all. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh go ahead, oh. laugh, make fun of me. No, it's just that you don't need a ladder. You are already so high up in the air on those stilts of yours. I am? Up high? Huh? Really high? Oh, no! <laughs> Major Bedhead. Oh, careful! Steady! Ooh. Ooh. Oh, come here and dust yourself off! Are you okay, Bedhead? Oh, sure, I'm okay. I just have to get the kinks out. <laughs> forgot about my scratchy Fritz. Come on down, Snickle Fritz. Don't be embarrassed about having fleas. It's nothing to be ashamed about. Everybody gets embarrassed from time to time. Why? Oi, now this is embarrassing. Help me down. Oi. My skirt's over my head and my bloomer is out for all the world to see. I've never been so embarrassed in all my life. <laughs> 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 that was a good one! <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> I sure did! <laughs> <laughs> we saw Baby Snake! <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh, you're not embarrassed anymore? <laughs> and are you ready to have your flea bed now? <laughs> oh, what a good kitty cat you are. You are really special. Very special. Special? Special? <laughs> I almost forgot. Special delivery for Lunette the Clown. Oh, thanks. What do you know? It's from my Auntie Macassar. Dear Lunette, This is just a quick message because I'm right in the middle of the great Gobi Desert Wiggling Walk Race. Good form. This is not a race about running. Mm -mm. This is a race about wiggling and walking as fast as you can. Oh, see you at the finish line. <laughs> Now, I know that the Shake Your Fanny Hoot Nanny is coming soon, and I figured that maybe, just maybe, you could use some of these great silly wiggle and moves. <laughs> hey! That's not walking, that's that's skipping and, and hopping and and jumping! No fear! <laughs> Oh, I gotta go. So have fun at the Hoot Nanny and keep on wiggling. Hey, you! Come on back here! Love your Auntie Macassar. <laughs> what a silly wiggle walker. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> well, that's funny. Gee, one minute I was scratching Snickle Fritz and now I'm scratching myself and feeling all itchy and... And wiggly? <laughs> I hate to tell you this, Bedhead, but it looks to me like you got some of Snickle Fritz's fleas. Fleas? Fleas? 
fleas. And you know what that means. Looks like it's bath time, Snick. Cool, let's go. The soap is in the top and the towels are on the shelf. And don't forget to scrub behind your ears. Well, this has been lots of wiggly fun, Granny, but we have to get back for... Da shake your fanny. Hunga dunga. Hoot the nanny. Bye. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lunette's Dance Academy. I think the storybook's here somewhere. Here we go. And my glasses. <gasps> oh, Molly, would you do the honors, please? Thank you. Now, let's see. What story? Oh, a great story. This is the story of Wee Wet Willy. Once upon a time, there was a little clown named Wee Wet Willie. Now, Willie had a problem that made him feel very embarrassed. The night before, when Willie was asleep, he wet the bed. When Willie woke up, his sheets and pajamas were all damp. How embarrassing! Willie's mother helped him change the sheets on his bed and put the wet ones in the wash. Willie didn't say much about it because he was very embarrassed. That night, Willie was in bed again, in his nice clean pajamas and under his nice clean sheets. But Willie wasn't sleeping. He was wide awake. Willie didn't want to fall asleep because he was afraid he would wet the bed again. Willie did his best to stay awake. He stared at the moon in the window. He peered at the light under the door. He told stories to his teddy bear. Oh, Willie did everything he could to stay awake. But as the night wore on, Wee Willie started to get tired and sleepy. And oh, finally, Willie fell asleep. That night, Willie had a dream. He dreamed he wet the bed again. Only this time, Willie wasn't just a little wet. He was soaked. The bed was soaked. There was water everywhere. There was so much water that the bed began to float. Great waves washed the bed across the room and out the window, carrying Willie and his teddy off into the night. Wee Willie's bed washed past the neighbors. They waved as Willie went by, but they wondered why Willie was sailing in his bed. How embarrassing! The bed sloshed down the road and out of town and all the way down to the harbor. Willie watched as boats went by, and still his bed kept floating, floating out to sea. How embarrassing. The wind blew up and the waves crashed down, and poor wee Willie was tossed in the raging storm. The sea, the storm, the big wet waves, it was all Willie's fault. How embarrassing. And then a great wave hit the bed, and poor Willie fell overboard. And he landed with a thump on the floor of his bedroom, safe and sound and dry as a bone. Willie wasn't wet, and neither was his bed. It was just a bad dream. 
Willie told his mother about his dream and about how scared he was of wetting the bed again. It was very embarrassing. His mother gave him a hug and told him, Please don't be embarrassed, Willie. Accidents happen to everyone. And someday you won't wet the bed anymore. And if it does happen again, try to remember that all you did was wet the bed. It's not like you flooded the whole world. Willie's mother tucked him back in under the covers and gave him a kiss goodnight. And Wee Willie slept, and Wee Willie dreamed a good dream. A dream of traveling through the dry, dry desert. But that's another story. The end. <sighs> Thank you. You know, Molly, that story about Wee Wet Willie seemed to be just the story you needed to hear today. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> oh, boy. And Molly, I hope you know that if you do have another accident and you wet the couch again, I won't be mad at you. And I don't want you to be mad at yourself either, okay? Okay. Because it's not a big deal. It's just a little mess and it's... Hey! Who made this big mess? Me? I did, didn't I? Well then, I have to clean it up. It's only fair. So get ready for the 10 second tidy. Ready, set, go! Done. Well, Molly, are you ready to have a nice little snooze? Okay. Well, thanks for being with us today. Molly and I are going to wiggle into the cushions now for a nice little nap. Toodles! <sighs> oh, look, Molly, darling. Our guest of honor has arrived. <sighs> Oh, please do join us. We're having the most pleasant meal, aren't we, Molly? <laughs> uh, would you be so kind as to pass the pepper? Uh, no, not the black pepper. Please pass the pepper. <laughs> Nor do I want the chili pepper. Pass the pepper. Oh, uh, what kind of pepper? Uh, the toilet pepper. Thanks. I really gotta go. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> There we go. That's much better. I always wash my hands after. Now, I wonder what's for dessert. Let's go see. <sighs> hey! What happened to our beautiful table? Molly? that an elephant came here and trampled it while I was in the bathroom? I bet Molly is trying to blame an invisible elephant for something she did her very own self. Um, that's a bit of a stretch, don't you think, Moll? Tell you what, I'm gonna go stretch on my clock rug. And if that elephant comes back, would you tell him that he's welcome to stay for dessert? If he resets the table for us. Okay, Molly, my dolly? Thank you. Last one to the clock rug is a couch potato. See if you can do this. It's fun.
did the elephant come back? No? Well then, who set up this gorgeous table? You did? Well then, who knocked over the other one? Oh, you did. Well, I thought so. Um, I didn't really believe you when you tried to blame it on the elephant. But I'm glad you told me the truth, Molly. Anyway, I like this table much better. Now, let's see. What shall we have for dessert? Hmm. Somewhere in here, I have a very special dessert container. Ah, here it is. See, it keeps the dessert inside, so all of its ooey-gooey goodness doesn't get all over the couch. That would be icky, sticky badness. Here, Molly, I think you're gonna like this. Now, close your eyes and open your nose. What's for dessert, do you suppose? Smell yummy? Oh, gee, that's not Molly's usual reaction to donuts. Huh. Ew! A stinky potato. Oh, that doesn't look like a very tasty dessert. Wonder how long it's been in there. Ooh! <coughs> Too long! <coughs> Oops. Well, we can't leave it there. It'll just get stinkier and stinkier. Well, who's gonna go down there and, and reach under and get it out? Oh, me? Oh, no, 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 no. You. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> you. Ah <laughs> ah. Uh -uh. Okay, well, if not me and not you, then who? Oh, Molly, please do not bring them into this. Hey, I know a great way to decide. Here, put out your fists. This is how it works. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. Five potato, six potato, seven. Potato, 26 potato, 27 potato, more. Twi oh, look! <sighs> well, seems to have rolled out all on its own. Hey, what do you know? Ugh. I should probably get that stinker over to Granny's compost where it belongs. Oh, but I need to find something to pick it up with. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, see you later, alligator. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, oh, sorry, Molly. <coughs> oh, Granny will love this. Oh, hi, Granny. I have something stinky for your.
your compost. Oh, goody. The stinkier, the better when it comes to compost. And the better the compost, the bigger and juicier my veggies will grow. Oi, the cycle of life. Well, into the compost with you then. Ooh. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Come here, Lunertkins. I have something I want to show you. Really? What is it? Ta-da! The latest and the greatest from my garden. Isn't it delightful? Oh, lucky duck! How did you get a potato to grow into such a silly shape? Wow, <laughs> it's kind of a secret. But a good compost is also very important. Oh, a secret? Oh, you can tell me, Granny. I won't tell, I promise. Well... Ooh, la la! My sweet potato pie is ready to come out of the oven. Hold that thought. Oh. Hubba, wow! Do you believe this? <laughs> this potato shaped like a duck really quacks me up. Quack, quack, quack. Oh, hi, Major Bedhead. Hi, Lunette. <laughs> Come see what Granny's garden grew. <gasps> a duck shaped like a potato. <laughs> quack, 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 quack. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Oops. Who's gonna tell Granny? Oh, me neither. Well, you had it first. Oh, oh but, but, but you started the game. Well, Snickle Fritz made me. Meow? But you're bigger. Well, you have whiskers. Oh. No, it's no, gonna be your fault. No, you did it. Because it was yeah, when you took it. Yeah, it was right above your head. Huh? Hey, you three! What's all the commotion? Well, well we were playing a little game. I was gonna say, and then they started rolling. But then they started rolling. All right, all right, all right. That's enough. Now everybody, take a deep breath. And let it out. <laughs> it is okay to make a mistake, but it is not okay to blame some other clown if you do. Um, Lunette, I'm sorry I said you made a bad throw. I think it was more like we all made a bad catch. <laughs> there, that's much better. Now, if you are all a little more careful, I got plenty more silly spots where that one came from. One potato, two potato, three potato, four. A boiled or a baked or a mashed potato, no matter how you slice it, it's yours. When there's something you should do that you promise to yourself and you pass it off on some unsuspecting little spot. When you want to take the blame, it's a shame when you shift it to another and you start slaying in that mud. Whee! One potato, two potato, three potato, four. A boiled or a baked potato no matter how you slice it, it's yours if you make a mistake and you take what you make and you think that you didn't even do you pass the buck to the yam in the corner if you think that will blink and you'll miss it while you're out of luck one potato two potato three potato four a boiled or a baked or a mashed potato no matter how you slice it, it's yours <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Major Bedhead, your tuba playing is totally tubular, but um, isn't there something else you're really good at? Why, sure, Lunette. I play a really mean stand-up bass as well. <laughs> <gasps> It's my great honor and privilege to present to you, Miss Lunette the Clown, a very special delivery from your Auntie Macassar. Oh, goody, thank you. I wonder what it is. Let's see what the card says. Dear Lunette, that's me. I am writing to you from the land of our clown ancestors. Patchwork Island. It's old home waking. 
I've decided that it's time for me to pass on to you this much treasured family heirloom. Inside this package is something very special that once belonged to your great grand clown, Lila May Pantaloon. Hmm. Lila May Pantaloon. Oh, she was a famous clown on Patchwork Island. Ooh. Oh, look, Patchwork Pants. Oh, they're beautiful. Try them on. They remind me of the old country. Hmm, I prefer new country myself, but those are pretty styly duds. <sighs> Big and comfy, just the way I like him. <laughs> Whoa, what's happening? Go <laughs> 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 Oh, sure. Blame the pants. It is the pants. Really? Oh, I can't stop. Oh, jeez. Some clown, help me. What will I do? Wow, you're not kidding. Granny, I think this is my job for the two of us. There. Oh, that's better. Oh. Well, here we go again! Oh. These pants have a mind of their own! I think they're trying to dance me inside! See you later! Good luck! Bye! Bye! Hey, what's up, Buttercup? Oh, a story? What a brilliant idea! Whoa! <laughs> I'd really love to uh, read a story with you right now, Molly, but I'm afraid these pants won't let me. Oh, no, honest, Molly! Really, I have no control. It's really these pants. Oh. No, an elephant did not come along and give them to me. No, in fact, they used to belong to my great-grand clown. Yes, and then my great-grand clown passed them on to my auntie Macassar, who then passed them on to me. That's what makes them a family heirloom. Yep, I, I'm tired of all this baggy pant mayhem. Oh, Molly, really, I'd love to hunker down for some sleepy time with you. Huh. Come on. Let's go! These certainly are very special and silly pants. <sighs> you know, Molly, I'm going to keep them nice and safe in the steamer trunk for the next time I'm in a really funny mood. There we go. But right now, I'm feeling kind of cozy and dozy. Are you still up for a story, Molly? Oh, goody. Me too. Are you? Great! Ah. Now let's get our comfiest of comfies. Ah. That's nice. Thank you, Molly. You need lots of light in your life, especially when you read. Oh, look at this! It's the story of Eli and Lila Mae Pantaloon, my great-grand clowns from Patchwork Island. Way out east, where the sun comes from, lies a tiny little island like a cradle in the waves. This island was called Patchwork Island because the different colored fields looked like a giant patchwork quilt. On this island, there lived two farm clowns named Eli and Lila Mae Pantaloon. For as long as they could remember, their family had grown potatoes. Now, these were no ordinary potatoes. 
The pantaloons were famous for growing the silliest looking potatoes on the whole island. Nobody knew quite how they did it, because they had a secret trick. During the day, they did what any other farm clown would do. Planting and picking, weeding and watering. But when the evening came, the pantaloons would put on their baggiest patchwork pants and do the silliest walks they could think of up and down the rows. This filled the earth with mirth and made the potatoes grow into hilarious shapes. This is what they had always done, and this is what they planned to always do. Until one summer's day, everything changed. Do you see that dark cloud? asked Lila. A little rain would be nice, said Eli. Do you hear that humming sound? wondered Lila. Probably just the wind, thought Eli. But the dark cloud grew bigger, and the humming got louder, and soon it became clear just exactly what it was. Potato bugs, shouted their neighbor. And he was right. Soon the whole island was covered in bugs, munching up every clown's crop. Every crop, that is, except the pantaloons. When the potato bugs had landed in their fields, the silly shapes made them laugh so hard they couldn't even chew. So Eli and Lila May's plants were saved. Unfortunately, every other clown was not so lucky. They called a meeting to talk about the problem. We want to know why the bugs aren't eating up your fields like they're ruining ours, said Laurel Manure. Yeah, why not, the others asked. Lila looked at Eli. What should they do? Could they blame it on something else? A, a new kind of seed? Better compost? No. They had to own up to the truth. So they shared the Pantaloon family secret with all the clowns of Patchwork Island. That evening, every clown put on their baggiest patchwork pants, and together they paraded up and down the rows of all the farms, doing the goofiest walks. The leaves quivered, stems shook, and roots wiggled. Soon the whole island was bursting with mirth, twisting the potatoes into the silliest shapes known to clown kind. Listen, said Lila. They all listened carefully. It started as a little snicker. Then it grew into giggles. And pretty soon it was a rip-roar and side-splitting little potato bug belly laughter. The bugs were laughing so hard they couldn't swallow another bite. So the dark cloud of bugs lifted up and flew off in search of a place where they could find a decent bite to eat. How the clowns shouted and jumped for joy. And from that day on, every clown on the island did the patchwork promenade. The end! <sighs> so that's Granny's secret for growing silly-shaped potatoes. Ha <laughs> ha! Boy, well, I hope we sure get to visit Patchwork Island someday. But for now, we can just visit it in our dreams. And... This is a nightmare! Hey! Who made this big mess? Molly did? Oh. Wow. It's pretty big of you to own up to your own mess, Molly. But you know what? I helped make it so it's our mess. So, get ready for the 10-second tidy. Ready, set, go! <sighs> Thanks, partner. What a good team. <laughs> and thank you for coming over to be part of our team. <sighs> Toodles! <sighs> I love you, Molly. To the moon and back.
and the clown jumped over the moon. <laughs> <laughs>